Hey guys, welcome to episode two of Empowerment Hour, Spiritual Insights to Personal Growth. Today we're going to talk about trauma, ways that you can heal it and actually cultivate it into a gift. Because when we experience different traumatic experiences in our life, the trauma can either take a will of its own or we can make a choice to heal it and actually cultivate a gift out of that. So today, Annie and I are going to share about some traumatic experiences we went through, how we were able to move through it and the gifts that it brought us. Yeah. Trauma can affect everyone differently. It could be being neglected, a car accident, physical abuse, death of a parent, illnesses or surgeries, I and mean, even fires, hurricanes, and floods. These are just some examples of what people go through that can change a person's life. And trauma is defined as a deeply distressing or disturbing experience that you go through. So Maria, do you want to start for us and share your story of what trauma you had in your life? Sure. Man. Trauma. Okay. Well, I've gone through many different forms of trauma in my life, but I'll start with, I would say the root of it, which would be my dysfunctional household that I grew up in. I got to experience and witness my parents fighting all the time, you know, just putting me into a very like frozen, anxious state. And I'm talking like fighting where there's, you know, all kinds of abuse. And I can remember one time in particular, you know, the gift part that it brought me because it helped me like heighten my awareness, like heighten my senses to a degree. Um, which we talked about in last episode with intuition, the gifts and everything. And I can remember I was maybe eight years old and I'm downstairs, grew up in Pennsylvania. And I just felt that something was off. I'm like, something doesn't feel right. I was like in the kitchen, just downstairs, like something, there's silence, like something's weird. And so I go up the stairs and I'm slowly going up the stairs and the door is cracked. The door is slightly ajar to my parents' bedroom. And I look in and my dad like has my mom up against the wall and she's just hysterical. Like, let me go, let me go. And he sees me, turns and runs over and like, bam, shuts the door, like kicks it so loud. I thought the door was going to break. I run, I'm startled. I'm like, whew okay, that's scary, but I'm like, my mom's in there. Something really wrong is happening. And so I creep up the stairs again and I go to the door and I listen and my mom is just sobbing, like, please let me go, like, stop. And I open the door and he turns and she gets away and runs and she's like, run, like, go now, like, get your sister and go. And we run out the door, my younger sister and I, and we're just outside. We don't know where to go because the car is locked. We're just sitting on the grass. My mom comes out like maybe five minutes later and she has like two white trash bags and we get in the car. She's like, let's go. And as we're driving away, my dad comes out with like coffee mugs and he's like throwing them at the car. And like that was a moment there were like many like that, but that was a moment where we're like, what do we do now? We have nowhere to live. We have no money. Um, who do we know? And we ended up kind of like camping out in the car some nights, going from like house to house. We're like, where do we live? Um, you know, and it's funny, at one point, the car my mom was driving was a Chrysler. And so we would call it the Chrysler building. And we're like, we're in the Chrysler building right now. And... You know, it's sad and all, but um, we ended up living with my my mom's mom for a little bit of time and so many stories that can come out of that. But through those experiences, like that was one of many, I ended up in one abusive relationship to the next. I ended up with, you know, certain types of like autoimmune disorders. I ended up, you know, just like attracting different things into my life where it was like a series of unfortunate events, which sucked. However, the spirit that I had, like even as a child to now was always like 
was still positive. Like um, I'd shared before, you know, like at five years old, I really did start journaling my dreams. Like I was following my intuition. Like even though there's like chaos going on around me, I would I was like, all right. My mom was always super healthy. She was like working out. She really took care of herself. And and um, I'm like, all right, let me work out. I want to be a fitness instructor. So I'm like working out to Denise Austin. I'm journaling my dreams. And so it through these experiences, like I cultivated this strength. I cultivated this like, okay, also this like heightened sense of awareness, like my sense of feeling, my sense of knowing, my sense of hearing through the trauma. Um, but I had to learn how to like take care of myself in the process, which I discovered later on. It was like, Hey, what is like the core here? It's loving myself. Uh, wow, Maria. I can't even imagine being small and just going up and witnessing something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. do, do you think if you had not gone up there, I mean, would it have been 10 times worse for your mom if you had not gone up into that room and tried to see what oh was God. going on? Oh my God. Uh, I can remember so many times other than that, like four years old even, where I became like my mom's protector. I was like, I need to get in the middle of this or, hey, like, I'm like, there's going to be like a doll smashed on her. There's going to be... There's just like craziness. And I feel bad to talk about this because I love my dad. I really do. Um, we all have our, our faults and flaws and not to like <laughs> dig him under the ground right now. Um, but it's the truth and it's what I experienced. And um, yeah, it's what we experienced. But yeah, there were many times where I would like try, like come to intervene. But that time in, in particular, I later found out because I had started doing a lot of uh, plant medicine work later on. I was studying shamanism and shamanic psychology and doing like deep psychological work. And in that experience, that memory came up and I asked my mom, I'm like, you remember that time that happened? She's like, oh yeah. She was like, oh, if you didn't come in, he was going to kill me. He had a gun to me. <laughs> wow. Not funny. Yeah. Wow. Oh my God. Yeah. And I know there's probably a lot of people listening to this today that grew up in households that were very dysfunctional, um, probably yelling and screaming the same thing. And I, you know, it is, it is interesting how those things affect our lives. Like you talked about, you started, you got into bad relationships and things like that were happening from a result of this. Mm -hmm. But what was your, um, what was the point where you knew you had to change things or try something different? What was it for you where you're like, I've got to do something different and mm -hmm. make you go down that path of working out and taking care of your body and learning all these other things that helped you? Mm -hmm. You know, I think like the part of like taking care of my health or like a positive spirit is kind of like woven in or intrinsic to my soul. It's kind of like who I am from birth to now. Thank God. Um, but I definitely have my ups and downs. I have my experiences where I'm like, how do I get out of this? This is this like, it's really bad. I think it took me just knowing that I didn't want to end up like that. And I could choose really, I'm like, I could choose to be with my thoughts and like, let this get at me, or I can choose to um, pursue something that I love. I can choose to do something else. Yeah, I always really prioritize self-care. I mean, even when I was little, I was like, I loved salad. I was like, you guys, you guys want salad? <laughs> I loved salad. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong. I definitely love Dunkaroos too. If you grew up in the 90s, I love Dunkaroos. <laughs> Oh yes, those are good. <laughs> um, but yeah, I was just like all about self care, and then I I got into fitness training. I started teaching classes, so yeah, um, that was like kind of my journey. So I think what the turnkey for me was, I this is not my life. I don't accept this. I have to make a change, and it's up to me to do that.
There's no one there to save me. I have to make the change and I'm willing to do what it takes. Yeah. Wow. That's incredible because it is really, really hard when that is your childhood and you were affected by that so much. It, you know, it can weigh a person down as you grow older and you're feeling things and you're not sure why you're angry or you're not sure why you're upset or why do you keep getting dating the wrong person? You know, it it takes a lot to stop and really look at everything and see what is causing all this stuff to happen in my life. So, Mm -hmm. I mean, thank goodness that you guys were able to escape and get out of there. It's incredible. (laughs) Right. No. Yeah, Yeah, it's true. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. (sighs) I know, but you know what? Take a deep deep breath. (laughs) Deep breath. You know, the gifts it brought though, seriously, like it did cultivate strength. It did. Um, it showed me like how resilient I am. It showed me that I had courage. It showed me that I can turn something scary and negative and bad and turn into a positive. I can use it. I could really learn from it. I can use it to help others. Would you, what's your, yeah. Like like you, I can think of several things, but um, the one I want to share today is um, so a long time ago, um, I was married to my first husband and I got pregnant and I, uh, we were so excited. We were so excited. And I went to my first doctor's appointment and they did an ultrasound and found there was no heartbeat. So mm-hmm. it was, at that time it was one of the worst, you know, it just like hit me like a knife. I was so upset. And I mean, I was so upset at the doctor's office. They took me out the back door so the patients wouldn't see me upset and hysterical. And I went home and I waited and my body wasn't processing everything like it should to when you're miscarrying. And so I chose to have a little procedure to help me process everything. And it was supposed to be like a 15, 20 minute procedure. I went in to get it done. And what happened is while I was, um, while I was asleep, the doctor accidentally perforated or cut open my uterus, cut it open and then accidentally cut through my intestines. So the So here's what I didn't know this was all going on, but I remember I woke up afterwards and I was, I was looking at a clock across the room. I was in excruciating pain. I was looking at a clock and I thought their clock's wrong. It's 6 PM. It should only be 1230. So I was, I told the nurse, you need to fix your clock because I didn't (laughs) know what had happened, but my my, um, family was in the waiting room and they said it was one of the most scary things for them as well, because something that should have been over with real quick. Yeah. The doctor came out and just said, we have some complications and wouldn't tell them anything. So six, it took six hours. Um, they ended yeah. up, the doctor at first didn't know it was wrong, but there was a lot of extra bleeding from cutting through extra things. And they had to call in a special surgeon. They ended up having to do a full C-section on me to get in and stitch up my intestines and stitch up my uterus. And it was, it was crazy. So I first have the pain and the trauma from miscarrying. And then, I mean, it, it took a little bit. I didn't, I didn't quite fully grasp at first what had happened, but my body was just, um, it was not okay afterwards. And it took, even though, you know, it's a lot of people just have, you know, you get your abdominals cut open and then you recover. I had a really hard time bouncing back from that. I was um, physically, it was hurting, it was painful. And then um, kind of the trauma of it all made me feel very sad, depressed, Mm. and it was hard to get back going again in life. It was really Mm. difficult. It was really difficult. Um, Yeah, I gotta take a deep breath. Yeah. Whoa. It was really hard. 
is really hard to go back to work to realize things were different. I, I don't know why it just, just, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. And I, I feel knew, that. Yeah. Okay. Lots of heavy stuff today. Trauma is heavy. Trauma is right. It's heavy and it can weigh us down, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, I afterwards met with an, I mean, I had a lot of people on my side. They're like, that should never have happened. And I met with an attorney and they talked about, do we sue or do we not sue? Cause I mean, is a big deal. Yeah. And I chose not to sue because really at the end of the day, yeah. um, if I could have children in the future, great. And that, and I do now yeah. I have two amazing boys and everything is good. So I feel very, very blessed for that. And, um, and just a quick side note, an interest, a blessing to all of this that I had no idea when it happened is I have a rare genetic disorder that makes my, when I am pregnant, my, um, babies are born with very low blood platelets and one of my sons almost died. So if I had had a regular um, vaginal birth, he would have died because he didn't have enough blood platelets. And so they bruise and the bleeding doesn't stop. And, and it was crazy. So when my son was born, he had to have a blood transfusion within moments of being born. And oh. so it was kind of, you know, we didn't know any of this, that I had all this, these genetic weird things, but um, <laughs> it's sort of the in disguise because it helped me have children in the future because I had to have C-sections. Um, right. But, you know, it's moving past that sadness, the physical pain, the all of that, that, you know, some of the tools we're going to talk about today are what I use to help me get through that and move on and start enjoying my life again. Thank, thank God. <laughs> So thankful for tools. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we're going to, um, you know, that's we intense. Just and Annie, that's intense. That's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I laugh, but it's just like, it is, it's just in, it's in, yeah, it's hard. It's hard. But hmm. What I really want to take out of this is share with people the tools that I learned to move through this and tools that you learned to get you to where you are today. Um, because trauma, again, it is heavy. It is emotional. You can have grief. You can have anger. You can have um, depression from it. It can affect your lives in so many ways. You might have physical pain because you know, after a trauma, there's physical pain because if emotions are in there and you haven't been able to process them, they can make you feel sick or wear your body out. So there's a lot of things that can happen after a trauma. And that's why we talk, while professionals talk about post-traumatic stress, it is mm -hmm. a real thing. It does affect yeah. people. Mm -hmm. Yes. So do you like, want to share right? one of like, our first tools? Like, like even after the trauma is long gone, um, yeah, the PTSD, it's like, the event happened three or four years ago, but I'm there's still a part underneath where I'm still reliving the moment or I'm not even thinking about it, but my body is still in that fight or flight place thinking it's still there and it's not. So it's like retraining the body to tell it it's safe. So I did a lot of um, nervous system relaxation techniques such as breath work, um, I'm just movement, yoga, um, what else? Uh, different forms of therapy or like neurofeedback when I experience like other trauma, um, traumatic events. But a lot of it comes through just like relaxing the nervous system. Like the, it has its own intelligence. So when you like get to the root of it and like a lot of techniques that we've learned too, and you clear the energy or that holding pattern that's there or that's like stuck there, you can free up that space. Like that's one of the techniques I love to use most in my sessions with clients is clearing the energy, getting to the root of it and um, just clearing that pattern. Do you want to walk us through a deep breathing? Um, yeah, sure. Tool that we could use that show the audience and people that maybe need to relax their nervous system. What's something we can do? Can you show us how to do that today? Yeah, sure. So one of the things I'm certified in is Butego, which is a series of breathing exercises designed to optimize your breathing for better health. 
it's going to increase levels. It's going to increase oxygen delivery throughout the body and relax the nervous system. All right. So let's do first. I'm going to teach you something that you can use. This is so cool. It's called, it's called the control pause and it's a measurement tool to measure how effectively you're breathing. So these breathing techniques are going to regulate your breathing patterns so you can free up the trauma that's stored in your body. All right. So how you measure your breathing, I want you to get a stopwatch out on your phone. Okay. So if you have your stopwatch, this is, oh, my thing's blurred, but that's a stopwatch there. <laughs> and I got mine. Awesome. So how this work is uh, you want to sit in a chair, feet planted. So then you, you allow your diaphragm to move efficiently Take a gentle breath in through your nose, a gentle breath out your nose. End of the exhale, pinch and hold. Time it till you feel the first desire to breathe back in through your nose again. So we'll all do it together. Okay. All right. Ready? Take a gentle breath in through your nose. Gentle breath out your nose. End of the exhale, pinch and hold. And it's still you feel that first desire to breathe. I just want to let you guys know that. So the first desire you have to breathe, then boom. But so it's not necessarily I'm trying to hold my breath as yeah. long as I possible. It's just when I feel that natural need to yeah. breathe in again. Okay, okay. Can we try that again? Let's do it again. Yep. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. Should I measure mine too? Okay. Yeah, why not? I'll measure mine too. Ready? So the first desire to breathe. Don't hold it too much. Just boom, that first desire. Okay, okay, gentle breath in, gentle breath out. Okay, <laughs> okay, good. You get it. Okay. Mine right, was so two how... seconds. Two seconds. Two I seconds. Want to bring right back in again. Okay, this is great information. Okay, so we know the control pause. On the end of the exhale, you hold first desire, you breathe back in through your nose. Anything under 25 seconds is considered dysfunctional breathing patterns. The goal of Buteco is to get it over 25, over 30, 40, 50, so forth, so you can regulate your breathing. Um, many of the chronic health issues that you see, like anxiety, depression, asthma, hypertension, snoring, um, that a lot of it's because you're over breathing. So we're going to slow down breathing, breathe less, and that's how you're going to relax the nervous system, help heal some of that trauma. <laughs> All right, so I'll show you this exercise. Now, we got the beginning control pause, whatever yours was, write it down. And this one is a great one. It's called the many small breath holds. And what you're going to do is we'll do this for a couple minutes. Okay, so take a gentle breath in through your nose and a gentle breath out your nose. End of the exhale, pinch and hold for five, four, three, two, one. Breathe lightly through your nose for 10 to 15 seconds, which may be one to two breaths in between. And all the way out the nose, pinch and hold for five, four, three, two, one. Breathing lightly through the nose for 10 to 15 seconds. And all the way out the nose, pinch and hold for five, four, three, two, one. Breathing lightly.
and all the way out the nose, pinch and hold. Okay, five, four, three, two, one. Breathing for 10 to 15 seconds, filling up your belly. At the end of the exhale, yep. Five, four, oops, three, two, one. Okay, so how do you feel? That was just like two and a half minutes. I feel good, more centered, mm -hmm. more relaxed. My mind went off of my busy thoughts and focused on just the breathing. So it was like a recentering for me. I let everything else go and just focused on that. Awesome. And it felt, I felt my body at first, I was like, am I doing this right? Am I getting this right? <laughs> but then my body started to just relax into it. It, this re, right. it was calming. It was calming. Ooh, amazing. Okay. That's, yeah, that's what it's designed to do. Okay. So now we just, we only did two and a half minutes of that. If you were to do more, so let's see what your control pause is now after doing just two and a half minutes of that. Ooh, that's a great idea. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And take a gentle breath in through your nose and always nasal breathing. Okay. And a gentle breath out your nose. And end of the exhale, pinch and hold. So you feel the first desire to breathe through your nose again. That was a lot better. What is it now? Now I'm at 10 seconds, so. <laughs> awesome. Yes. So what that's doing is it's increasing lung capacity. So the greater the lungs, the greater the health. So we're stretching out the lungs. We're allowing for more oxygen to fill up our our bodies, our cells, there's so many benefits yet yeah, to breathing. So that's just a little bit of information. Wow. Thank you for sharing that with us. That's yeah, really yeah. good. Mm -hmm. That's really good. Okay. Can I share tool number two? Yes. Okay. So the next tool we want to talk about is journaling. And I know a lot of people hear about journaling. Oh, you should write, you write stuff out. But really what I want to really emphasize today is after a traumatic experience, there could be a lot of emotions that come up. And as a healer and a psychic, what I find is that emotions hold an energetic charge, whether it's anger, resentment, sadness, frustration, there is an energetic charge to them and they can if you don't release them in a proper way, they can manifest in your body. So when I'm working one-on-one -on -one with clients, I get a lot of people with neck and back pain. So what I have noticed, people with neck and back pain, almost all the time, and again, it's different for everybody, but almost all the time, there's frustration. Mm -hmm. And I'll say, okay, what's a pain in your neck in your life? And a lot of times I'll hear work or my husband or my wife or my kids. And then they talk about how a situation had happened and how they feel. And while they're doing that and I'm doing some energy work, they realize that they've been either just storing that energy there or sometimes we don't even know we're subconsciously um, gripping our muscles or tightening our muscles just ever so much that you're putting more pressure on your nerves and on your spine. So there is something to those emotions being there. And as we go through our day, we don't sometimes we don't even realize that something happened and it was really bothering us. So one of the easiest ways to get out an emotion is just to start to journal. 
what do you notice? What do you feel? Where do you feel it? You can even start my neck hurts or my leg is aching or whatever it is. You can even start with just a physical pain and you just want to start writing out what you're experiencing, what you feel, or just write about your day. And what did you notice? What happened? What was going on? Out of all the emotions, anger tends to have the most charge. And what I feel as a healer causes a lot of illnesses and diseases in the body is anger. Anger is such a high emotional charge that sometimes you even need to physically get it out. And we'll talk about that in just a minute. But first, just by writing about what you feel can sometimes dissipate it enough, get it out of your body. It's on paper. You've got it out of your system now. And then you can move on without that emotion or thought weighing you down. So it's a really good process to help release some of that that you're carrying every day that's affecting you. But mm -hmm. the other caveat to that we're going to talk about is our third tool of why it's important to move. But I just wanted to start with that. I find anger. People actually, the more they move the body, the more the anger can come out. But go mm. ahead, Maria. Tell oh, us interesting. Need. That's an interesting observation. Um, but yes, about journaling. Totally agree. Journaling, it's like when you have the mental chatter going on in your mind and it just feels like too much, when you get it out of your head and onto something else, that's like ooh, a release. Um, just like, just whatever it is, just writing. Um, I love that. I actually yeah. created a journal because I'm like, uh, journaling's amazing. So I'm like, how can I make something? Uh, when I, when I have clients, um, what I, that are really upset about something or super frustrated or, you know, like, okay. So like you go back and you're talking about your childhood and it's starting to bring up anger or how angry you are at your parents or the situation. Um, I really, I, some of my clients, I have to have them go take a pillow and just punch the pillow or go out running and go run as hard as you can. Um, some clients I have go out in a, in a, in a safe space where you're not going to scare everybody and just scream at the top of your lungs. And then it kind of, it, whatever that charges behind the anger, it gets it out. You just physically mm. move and it, boom, it releases. Mm. Um, I see what you're yeah. saying. Yes. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah, that's a great, that's a great way. Well, and it moving the body too. it, it makes me think of your story where you're like, well, I was really healthy. So did movement help you get through some of what you were experiencing from your childhood? I mean, just being able to exercise and be fit and you know, how did it help you? Yeah, I would say, I mean, like, Yes, yeah, since I was a kid, exercise has been with me my whole life. If I wasn't active and moving, I would feel stuck and stagnant. It keeps me mobile, keeps me, um, it increases levels of serotonin and endorphins, like the feel good hormones or the feel good chemicals their brain releases. It's a detox, it's a natural, just the sweat to move, like the muscles, the body loves it. And I mean, I did experience times in my life where I was like physically, I guess physically sick. I was going through a lot of like autoimmune stuff. Um, but even while during that, I still made sure I was active. So it's just always been really important to me. And it helped a lot. If, if someone is really ill, they're having a hard time moving because they're very sick. Um, what would you recommend some easy movement things that they could do for themselves? Mm -hmm sick as in like, I've got a fever or cold sick or sick, like autoimmune or sick, like depressed. Let's say autoimmune. Like, you know, there's a lot of people with autoimmune, autoimmune diseases right now, and they're finding it hard to even get off the couch or get out of bed. What are some things that maybe they could do? I love that. You know, especially like if it's hard for you to get out of bed, like that, it feels like depression. It feels like it just feels hard, unmotivated. You can just start by doing some like active stretching, just some simple stretching. If you're laying in bed, just like put your arms out, put your hands over your head, hold over your head, do bring your leg up, hold your leg. Just feel like, feel the stretch in your muscles and like your body starts to wake up a little bit. It's like, oh, well, thanks for noticing me. 
Thank you. I'm getting the blood moving. All right. Um, you could even force a smile. You may be hating life right now or whatever. Not, hopefully you're not. But if you're feeling that way, okay, try it. Let's try it. For 20 seconds, we're going to just smile. Ready? And go. <laughs> it feels silly, but you can't help but naturally just start to laugh a little. Yep. Do you feel like inside <laughs> it boosts your mood a little bit? I'm sure there's some people at home being like, fine. Like, okay, I have to turn this off. <laughs> Done. <laughs> no. Yeah. I feel it. Even it makes me laugh. And and honestly, for me as a healer and stuff, laughter helps me break up some of the energy that I'm experiencing. So I tend to laugh a lot too. But yeah, 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 yeah. the smiling, I can see how that would just. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, right? Yeah. Or even yeah. like, or even doing little laughs you could even just like make yourself laugh but i always if i'm feeling stuck i just get up and i go for a walk i just move my body just go for like a 10 minute walk um and yeah just get the energy moving i like the when the blood is circulating the oxygen circulating through your body yeah and just the fresh air alone sometimes is just nice and resetting and yeah mm -hmm. I love yeah that. right being in nature like feeling the fresh air on your face like being like very conscious of your surrounding I'm feeling the wind on my face I'm feeling the sun on my skin I'm feeling like just being I I see a tree just like become really aware of your surroundings it makes you not out here and more present like you become more grounded yeah. And, and that makes sense because we can tend to get so wrapped up in our thoughts and our negative thoughts and how we're hurting in different ways that if you can just focus on something else like that, that can, that, that's enough that it could shift you and help you feel better right away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. Those are, uh, um, some really good tools and tips that um, can just help you start to move through trauma. And we want to share with everybody, we know trauma is very serious and we encourage everyone to seek out help by a doctor or a counselor or a medical professional. If you are experiencing post-traumatic stress or just a lot of symptoms and you're not sure how to get through it, but also there are a lot of great healers and intuitive coaches out there that can help you clear this as well. Um, Maria and myself, we're both, um, coaches as well. And so we work one on one with clients. We love to help people. Maria, if someone would love to reach out to you and get more information, how would they find you? You can find me. Uh, you can go to my website, intuitivecoachmaria.com, or you can find me on Instagram at Maria Shapester. And I want you to share yours too. I want to also mention how we cu cultivate it into a gift, right? So it's like, for, um, yeah, first, hold on, Annie, what is yours? <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Um, you can, if you um, have more questions for me, um, again, I love, I love doing healing. So it's one of my favorite things to do on people's bodies is to help them move through um, physical pain. Um, my website you can reach me at is anniebryson.com. And there you can get my email and phone number from that site as well. But yeah. Okay. Go ahead, Maria. Awesome. I know. Um, so because, all right, why we're doing these things, not only does it get us out of the fight or flight response, but the gift part, what is the gift in all that? So it's like, yeah, we experience these trauma. Okay, great. I've got to like do these tools and techniques, techniques now to overcome it, to heal from it. Where's the gift? The gift is in the learning. The gift is in, as you nurture the trauma, a gift can blossom out of it. And who knows what comes on the other side? If when you don't, the trauma takes on a will of its own. That's when you keep on recreating the same experiences and patterns over and over again. You attract abusive partners. You are stuck in a job you don't like. 
that's, you know, so it's like you have a choice. And when you choose to heal it and you dive a little deeper, you can really um, get great gifts out of that. And I know like some of my gifts that we were talking about before is um, by taking the path of healing and self-development, it's being more intuitive, um, being able to trust myself more, having like the psychological wisdom that I didn't have before, more awareness, right? So, and also like being artistic, acting, you know, like just being more involved in my creative endeavors and, and healing. So yeah. And what about you? Like what gifts did you get out of it? Yeah, it's, it, well, part of it was I wanted to share real quick is being psychic and intuitive really caused me to feel a lot of things I didn't understand. And it ended up making me very sick at one point. And I, to be honest, I hated it. <laughs> I hated being intuitive and psychic for a long time. And I tried to turn it off because mm. I didn't like how I felt. But when I learned to embrace it and learn from it and grow from it, I became empowered by it. I transformed my life after that. And all those gifts and skills that I learned, I want to be able to help other people who are having a tough time or suffering or hurting and just have no idea how to get through it. That's my mission is I want to help other people move through whatever's going on in their life so they can enjoy life, so they can love life, so they can create the life that they want to have and enjoy it. And um, like I said, I used to think this was a curse. And now I look back and I now can fully embrace it as a gift that everything I went through helped me become who I am today. And I am, I am grateful. I am grateful for all those things. Yeah. Ooh, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So everybody, Thank you so much for listening. We know this is a very big topic. A lot of people have been through so much. So please, if you have questions, feel free to reach out to us, message us, go to our websites, and we'd be happy to connect with you. Maria, do you yeah. have anything else you want to add? That's it. Yeah. Just keep on like doing you, being you, showing up and yeah. And saying yes to your saying yes to you. Yeah. This is so much fun. I love this. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Me too. But thank you everyone for being with us today and we'll see you on our next episode. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.